Okay. So now we're going to start our first application. So I think we know enough now. In order for us to determine if faults are going to slip or not, we really we just need to know about stress and pore pressure. And we know enough about that now. So and we're just going to introduce this today and then we'll go into a little more detail next week. The idea here is, you know, we're going to solve problems, so we're going to be modelers, right? And I said we need to know stress. But what stress are we going to use? Again, our goal is to determine if a fault is going to slip. We need to know stress and we need to know pore pressure. What stress are we going to use? We talked about how to measure the pore pressure, so we're going to, I mean, remember I told you stress is a coordinate frame dependent thing, right? So if, I, so if I rotate or change my coordinate system, I have a different stress tensor. Right. Pore pressure is just a scalar, and we can measure or estimate it just like we just talked about. But in terms of stress, what, what coordinate system, what stress coordinate system are we going to use? Principal stress is specifically, but I guess more generically I would say, the ones we can measure. The easiest ones to measure are the principal stresses and directions. Right? Measure or estimate. And so we're going to use a stress coordinate system that is associated with the principal stresses and directions. And those could essentially be arbitrary, right? They can certainly be arbitrary with respect to our fault. On the scale of the of tectonic, you know, uh, large geologic scales, our principal stresses and directions are not always going to be perfectly lined with any coordinate system that we might lay on a fault. Because, right. you know, the most natural coordinate system to lay on a fault is the one that's drawn there. You, you orient the coordinate system with the, with the strike of the fault. And so our principal stresses could be any sort of arbitrary other direction. Right? We'd be really lucky if they lined up perfectly. And so um, we need to take our principal stresses to, you know, in order to determine if the fault's going to slip or not. We need to take our principal stresses and do a change of coordinate frame onto the fault to determine what the stress is on the fault. Because remember, stress is coordinate frame dependent. So I'm going to take my principal stresses, which I know or can measure or estimate, and I need to get them onto the fault. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use an intermediate frame. Okay? Because there's a convenient inter intermediate frame. And it turns out that th this is useful throughout this class because we're going to use the same intermediate frame later when we do wellbore geomechanics. So we, we have the same problem in wellbores. We have some arbitrarily oriented princi principal stresses and directions that we can measure, and we want to solve mechanics problems in the wellbore, so we have to get the stress as we know it, measure it in the principal directions and stresses into the sort of wellbore frame, if you will. So we have to do some coordinate transformation. Okay? And so we're going to use an intermediate frame. What do you think is a convenient intermediate frame? I'm a modeler, I can choose it to be anything. I could like orient the reference frame with respect to the corners of my house. And I could do mechanics problems that way. That's not a very convenient one. Well, uh, I mean, we could, we, could, we could technically do that. We could, I mean, we're going to define a, a coordinate frame on the fault like that, you know, uh, using the strike of the fault. But I, but I said we're going to use an intermediate frame. What's a, co what's a convenient intermediate frame? There's, there's no well here. We're just, we're just worried about faults. How about just the cardinal directions, right? The cardinal directions. So that's a convenient intermediate frame. So 
we're going to use an intermediate frame for what we're going to call the geographic frame, reference frame. It's going to have the coordinates, or it's going to be oriented north, east, and down. And so, we'll just draw it. We have north and down. And the reason the reason we chose we choose north we don't have to choose north east and down, but to min to, to save ourselves some work or make things convenient for us, it makes sense to pick down because we know that the principal stresses one of them is going to be down. And so uh, it makes sense to choose one of these to be down. And so we can then just arbitrarily choose one of them in the plane. Let's choose north, OK? So then why do I choose east versus west? I got to have a right-handed coordinate system, right? So you know, again, use your right hand. Stick your thumb in the direction of down. Point your fingers in the direction of north and curl your hand close your hand, that's a positive rotation, right? That's a rotation in the direction of east, right? From north to east. Right? And so that's why we choose east. Right? And so, you know, our principal stresses, again, one of them is going to be down. And then the other two are going to be somewhere in the plane of the Earth, but we don't know. Right? And so this could be SH max, SH min. Okay. And so that, in this case, SV and down are obviously aligned, but SH min and SH max are orthogonal to each other. North and east are orthogonal to each other, but they're not aligned. These two coordinate frames aren't aligned. And so what we'll do <coughs> is we're going to, and we'll, we'll actually go through what the, the exact transformations next time. And this is why, essentially, you had to learn linear algebra, because they're matrix transformations. But what we'll do is we're going to take the principal stresses. We're going to rotate them into the geographic frame, or Specifically, I guess I should say unrotate them, right? because we're going to assume that any transformation or rotation from the geographic frame is positive. Right? So if I go from the geographic frame into the frame of the fault, that's a positive rotation. Right? If I went from the geographic frame to the frame of the principal stresses, that would be a positive rotation. Okay. But what we're going to do is we know the principal stresses, and we're going to unrotate them, if you will. We'll do a negative rotation into the geographic frame. And then once we have them in the geographic frame, we can transfer them onto the plane of the fault. And then we'll know what the stresses are on the plane of the fault. And we can determine that with the pore pressure and a little bit of knowledge about friction. It's always 0.6. That's all you need to know. Friction is always 0.6, except when it's not. <clears throat> uh, then we'll be able to determine if faults are slip. And uh, you know, this is probably this this concept of, of rotations in this is probably the most important concept in the class because again. We're going to use the same geographic frame when we do wellbore mechanics. And then there, it's the same. The, the initial rotation is the same, right? So we're going to go from the principal stresses, sort of unrotate into the geographic frame, and then from the geographic frame into the wellbore. Okay. And then we solve mechanics problems in the wellbore. The nice thing is, is that you know, next time on Monday, we'll, we'll go through the actual you know, constructing the rotations, okay, and how you do this. And again, it's just a sequence. 
or you know, it's a sequence of transformation matrices. And then one, once you construct it, all you have to do, and we're, then you're, then you're going to code it up, and then all you have to do is to be able to identify the angles between the principal stresses and your geographic frame. Then you put your three principal stresses and the three rotation angles into your code and it pops out the geographic stress, right? And in fact, I even let you do that on the test. First test you've probably ever taken, you're gonna get to have your laptop in front of you. Because I don't believe in, like, I'm not, I don't wanna test you on how fast you can, you'll see the, the transformation matrix is kinda big. And I don't believe in testing you on how fast you can type something into a calculator. I want to test you on your knowledge, and in this problem, the really only knowledge is the identification of the angles between the principal stresses and the geographic frames. Then you just plug them in, and you'll get you'll get your result. Does everyone have a laptop? If you don't, I will bring. We're not. I'm going to scare you to start talking about tests yet, but. Uh, just so you know, if you don't have a laptop, I'll bring the cart, uh, and you can you'll be able to use one of the one of the departmental laptops. All right. <laughs>